Hey there, everybody, and welcome back. For those of you that are interested in learning about setting up the data resource and connector in AppGyver for use with Firebase, stay tuned. We're going to be doing that by the end of this video. Now, I do want to note that this tutorial is not going to cover setting items in repeat. It's only going to cover how to essentially configure or set up the connector, the data resource, and then start getting information from Firebase into AppGyver. This isn't going to cover how to set items in repeat. So for example, every time you add something uh, like a form or a field in Firebase, it's automatically added to this app. That is covered in the series for how to set up this REST API direct integration, but I'm not going to cover it in this Firebase series. I just want to get you all started with this resources and connectors and then getting something basic. So for example, how to get one field to come over in a paragraph in AppGyver and then update when that's updated in Firebase, but I won't cover items in repeat here. Now, this video can actually work for anyone who's doing this as a one-off project. So if you already have your own AppGyver project, this will allow you to kind of walk through that Firebase setup so that you can get some data pulled in from Firebase in more of a streamlined way. But if you're following along with my how to create a social or sharing app series, I'm adding this into that series as a little bit of a refresher. Now, bear in mind, the series uses the REST API setup right here, and we're going to be using the Google Firebase setup. Both will accomplish the same thing. This one's just a little bit easier. However, if you're looking for support throughout that series, it's not going to be provided for this Firebase setup just because this is a newer thing and also that series has kind of already been finished. So let's go ahead and jump straight in. We'll make this super quick for you all. So you're going to log into AppGyver. Go ahead and open up a project. I'm assuming everyone's kind of at that point. We're going to go to any page and we're just going to click on data. Now what I want to show you first is if you're in data resources, if you click on add resource and you go to Firebase, then you should see a red error message down here saying you need to configure the connector first. I've already done it once, so that error message won't show, but we're going to walk through the process start to finish either way. So next thing you need to do is go to Firebase. So you're going to go to console.firebase.google.com. You're going to click add project and we will just type in test one as I'm going to delete this when this project's done. We'll keep analytics enabled. We'll just choose the default settings and we'll click create. Now, while this is creating, I'm going to walk you through how we do this start to finish, um, kind of like a timeline. So we're going to go to Setup Connector, then the Data Resource, and then we're actually going to add the data variable. So those are the three steps, and then we should be able to run with that from there. Now, we're going to click Continue in Firebase, and then we're going to go to Firestore Database, and from this page, you're going to be able to click the Create Database button. When you do this, you have two choices, so production mode or test mode. Now, I want to let you all know, if you're having issues, look at this section right here, if false. This basically means third-party reads and writes are denied. So if you set this up with this, then you're not going to be able to actually pull in any data. So you could set up everything correctly, and then all of a sudden you're going to notice nothing's being pulled through. That right there is why. Very, very simple workaround for this. So we'll click Enable. It'll provision the Firestore. This will probably take anywhere from 20 to 40 seconds. And then they'll set up those security rules. So the first thing we're going to do to make sure we don't forget is go over to Rules. And we're going to change this. Now, what I'm about to do is not the best rule for you, so you need to view the docs and figure out what's best for you. I'm going to set this to open. So I'm basically just removing this and just allow read write and click publish. You'll get a note here that says this is public, so anyone can steal, modify, or delete. So make sure you set up your rules to be or do whatever you need them to do. Then we're going to go back over to data. And now we're just going to create a sample collection. So we're going to call this tester, and that's the name of the collection. And then the document ID, we're just going to call this document, because I'm not very original. And then we're just going to put in one sample field, and that is going to be Tyler Talks. Now we're going to click Save, and you'll see this is how it's been updated here. 
Now, what we're going to do is go over to Settings, Project Settings, and then we're going to scroll down. And the first thing we're going to do is create this web app. So you're going to nickname this something that works best for you. I'm going to go with Test1. And then you'll wait a second, make sure that you're setting the settings relevant for you. And then you're going to get this page here, which is going to get us started. So starting from scratch, we're going to click on Data over in AppGyver. We're going to scroll down. And I want to make a note of one thing here. You see we have configurations for iOS, Android, and web app. I would recommend to use all of these earlier on if possible. Just get the configuration set up. It's a lot easier than having to realize later on down the road that you're setting it up for iOS later. This is something you can easily forget and then wonder why things aren't working as intended. So I would get it set up earlier on. So we'll walk through uh, the web app and Android, and then you can do iOS on your own time as it's pretty much the same process. So first thing we need is our project ID. And we can actually get that back from the home page, but it's also right here. So it's in the home setting page as well as here. So we're just going to copy and paste everything in the middle of the quotes. And so next up, we need auth domain. So we're going to find that, and it's literally just matching up the green text in quotes with the black text off to the side for the corresponding text field that we need. Next, we need a measurement ID. So we're going to scroll and find that, paste it over here, and I'm just highlighting in either Command or Control C. Then we'll need storage bucket and message sender ID. So we'll get storage bucket. And then lastly is message sender ID. And also make sure you don't accidentally misread something. So for example, if you see sender ID and then project ID, try not to get these mixed up, which should go without saying, but it does help us. Some of these could have similar names. So we have those set up. Now we're going to add the web app configuration by sliding the toggle. And we're going to see what we need here. So typically, you're going to need your API key. So we will simply highlight the API key. And we'll need the web app ID. So we're going to grab this app ID right here. And then we're going to set up Android configuration as well. So we're going to now click continue to console and you'll see down here in the same project setting pages or page we now have this web app. So then we're going to click add app and repeat the process for Android. You're going to fill in this with the corresponding information for your application. I'm just going to make mine a sample because I'm going to delete it after. So I'm just put com.test.tester and then we're just going to put test1 and register app. Again, fill out your info with what's relevant to your application. And then at this point, you should be able to download a JSON file. And we're going to click on that. And I'm going to go through the settings just to show you essentially what we're doing next. So we're just going to scroll down, click Next, and continue to console. Now you'll see we have the Android app here. So we can click on this, and you'll see we have our app ID right here. So we can go ahead and grab app ID and we'll slide the Android toggle over. Now you're gonna notice we have an API key and a client ID and those are not available right here. Very, very simple. If you ever lose the JSON we just downloaded, you can click this download button or you can also click on the CSDK instructions. So. We already have the JSON file. If you need it again, you can click there. When it downloads, you'll open it. I, I'm not sure if you can open it in, in Notepad. It might be possible. I'm opening mine in Visual Studio Code. Don't get, um, don't allow yourself to get scared by what you see here. It looks like a lot of information, but we really only need two pieces. So we're going to go back to our AppGyver menu. We need the API key first. So we are going to 
try to find that API key, which is right here. And you're just repeating the process just within Visual Studio Code or whatever program you use to open that JSON file. And then Android Client ID. And then if we go up a little bit, you should see Client ID right here. And we're going to copy that and paste it in. And you would effectively follow those same steps if you wanted to set it up for iOS. Download the config file, get all of those details, and basically for iOS you just follow steps one through five. This will walk you through exactly how you need to do everything. So I'll let you all do that in your own time. But at this point we have everything for Android and the web app. So we're going to verify that it's all filled in and we'll click on save. And then at this point, the connector is set up. Step number two, if you remember, is the data resource. So we'll click add data resource and click on cloud storage. So we're gonna name this, I'm just gonna stick with tester. The collection name is important. So when you remember, we're gonna go back to fire store database. The collection name is right here. We chose tester. You don't have to make these the same. The data resource name you can see right here is basically just the name. So this is like our REST API integration names or the REST API resource names. You're going to leave this one as is. The ID is the default. And the property is going to be your information here. So essentially what we are doing is we're creating the schema within the user interface or UI of AppGyver. So when we're doing the third party API, we have to essentially pull in all this information and then tell AppGyver what to do with what. Here we're basically just telling AppGyver there's a name field and any other fields there may be. So very simple here. All we need to do is put name. And if you don't click the plus button, it will not save. So you just put in name, you leave it default because ours is text. We'll click save data resource. You'll see it's now there and we'll click save. And now we can collapse data and switch over to variables. We'll go to data variable. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this one because this is an older one and we'll click save. And now we're just gonna click add data variable and tester now appears or whatever you named yours. Don't get scared if you see a little one come after it. That's just how AppGyver sets this up. So we'll set this up. So our data variable has now been added. So now we can go ahead and collapse these menus. Well, how do we verify? Super easy. We're going to drag over a paragraph, and we want this paragraph to display what shows up in name. So we're going to change the content here. We're going to go to Formula. And then the shortcut to learning a little bit about AppGyver formulas, we just click on data variables and you'll see the variables that you can use right here. So if you remember ID was default, well, what we're gonna choose is the name variable. So you double click that, click save and click save. This is not the correct information, that's simply a display. So all we need to do now is click save here and you'll see this is page two. So we're gonna launch the app by clicking Open App Preview Portal. And this app is called For YouTube People. So we'll click on Open, and we're going to click on Page 2 because that's where Page 2 is. And you'll see right here, it shows exactly what comes through in this collection. So very, very simple. Now, a quick word of caution for this, as well as a couple of ideas to throw your way. So you'll see that this is updated right here. If you want to view this as a mobile view from your computer, you can right click and click on inspect. And don't allow this to scare you at all. We're ignoring all the code and stuff over here. You simply deselect this option and select this icon here if you're using Google Chrome. There should be similar options in other browsers. And you can select the device type you want to view this on. You can also use the uh, AppGyver preview app that is available, I believe, in Google Play. I'm not sure it should be in the Apple App Store as well, uh, but you can check there just to be safe. Now, what I want to point out with this is you'll see that this information exists right here. So let's change this value and see what happens. So we're just going to change this to talks and we'll refresh the page. 
and you'll notice that it updates here. So that's why I really enjoy using this Firestore section. When you build this out, when you make updates here, it'll update within your application. However, if you do something like, let's just say you want to add a field and make it name two, and we'll put, we'll put Tyler. So we have these two separate. Well, if we go over here and refresh, you're going to notice that nothing actually changes. And that's because we changed the structure. So if you're adding collections, fields, documents, etc., you'll need to update your app variable or the data variable, I should say. So what we're going to do real quick is I have this repeated view that I turned on. We're going to ignore that. We're just going to drag a paragraph over. So we have this paragraph here and we're going to see what exactly this looks like if you wanted to try to go edit this yourself now. So if we go to formula and we go to the data variables and we delete all this content, you'll notice that there's nothing here. So I had to do some adjusting outside of this video, but what I want to walk you through is if you had some issues after adding fields or documents, it's pretty simple to get this updated and fixed. So we're just going to move the slider across. So you could delete your data variable if you're having issues just to be safe. What I do is I go to the data resource tab, click on the data resource, and we're going to look at this resource schema. So we're going to add name, and then we're going to add name two. Bearing in mind, if you put a space in there, it does not save correctly. So I'll show you how that works. If you put name two and you click save, it doesn't actually work. But we have name and name two. So we're going to save the data resource and we'll click save. And now what we're going to do is for this, we're going to go to formula and we're going to delete all the content. And in data variables, we will put the name two first and save. And we can actually click here, control C, control V, and it'll copy that element. And we're just going to remove the number two and click save, save. And we will do one final republish. And you'll see it forces this to refresh and we have Tyler talks. So if you wanted, you could publish this application as it is and then make your updates to Firestore on the back end. Again, just making sure that, for example, someone mentioned that they wanted to create a recipe app on a previous video. If you're wanting to do that, then create all of your collections in advance. So maybe you want to have, uh, we'll just say Italian and then a couple of other different countries and you're doing food by country then organize your documents and everything else accordingly. That way you can add all of your fields and then just add those data resources. So the idea here is you want to avoid having to update your data information in AppGyver because that's going to push a lot of updates to users. If you're okay with that, then that's completely fine. But again, the idea is just Put some thought into how to organize this, play with it a little bit, figure out what works best for you. And if you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below. But again, a very, very quick summary. We went to the data tab. We enabled the connector, filled out this information from Firebase. We just clicked add resource, named the resource and set the schema. And then lastly, we just added the data variable through this variable tab by clicking add variable. And that was all there was to it. You then select what you want to do within the interface and it adds in updates as you need it to. And that's all there is to it. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below. Otherwise, I'll see you all in the next video.